Hey everyone, it's Saffer and I'm back with another video. And my nails are green today. Um, it's for a thing that we were filming at school, so just ignore it. I'm sorry if it's too distracting to look at. But as you have probably gathered from the title and the thumbnail and the introduction of this video, today I'm going to be painting with tea. This video is also a collaboration with Melanie from Visual Mind and she is also going to be painting with tea. So once you're done watching this video, you should go over to her channel and check out what she made for this part, for her part of this collaboration. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for her video. So we were talking back and forth about making this collaboration and how we wanted to do it. And we decided that it would be fun to do a challenge and then have a theme that we had to stick to. So we agreed that it would be really fun to try and paint with tea as our challenge. And then we set the theme to be magical. So today I will be painting something magical with tea. But first I am doing a sketch, you know, kind of need to know what you're doing before you jump into splashing tea everywhere. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that currently I am not very inspired to draw and I'm finding it really hard to, to like figure out what I want to draw and I'm very demotivated. So of course I spent a really long time trying to figure out what I wanted to draw for this because I wanted to make it nice. Like I wanted to make a good thing, right? Uh, but I just, I did not know what to draw at all. I kind of had this vague idea of drawing a witch girl or something in like a living room or something drinking tea. But I really had no visual in my mind. I just had that idea. So I spent a really long time uh, searching for inspiration on Pinterest and on Google and just looking for something that kind of fit that idea that I had. And I just couldn't find anything. So in the end, I just ended up saying, you know what, I'm just gonna make a cute little witch girl sitting in a chair, sitting in whatever kind of chair in a kitchen or in a living room. So I looked up different sitting poses and then I found this one. And I figured this one is kind of, this one's kind of cute, kind of cool. So I basically kind of just built it up around that sitting pose. And then I got kind of excited about it actually, because I drew the chair and I drew her sitting in the chair. And I remembered that it's been a really long time since I last did something with an actual background and with perspective in it. So I wanted to do that. And then I realized, wait, but I'm doing this for a paint with tea challenge. Um, maybe I'm getting a bit ambitious here, but you know, can't half-ass it. If, if you're going to do something, you might as well, uh, overdo it, right? So today I will be painting a whole full illustration with a background in perspective with tea. And here's the tea. So I made myself a couple of different kind of teas in some different cups. And uh, I made these a couple of days before I needed them. And they've been in my room ever since. And my room really smells a lot like tea right now. It's actually kind of pleasant. There's a very, very strong uh, tea smell in my room. But I figured that it would work best if I left the tea for a while, if I wanted to to get it nice and pigmented, it would probably work better if I let it steep for a while before I used it. So that's why I decided to make the tea in advance. I have in the past done a challenge similar to this where I was painting with coffee. I've actually done that a couple times and I find that to be a lot easier actually because with coffee you can use instant coffee or you can put a lot of coffee grounds in there to make it very saturated. But with tea, it's kind of different because for some reason, tea doesn't get as saturated as coffee, if that makes any sense. It's like the water doesn't want to absorb a lot of tea. I guess it's also leaves because with coffee, if you use instant coffee, it's basically 
this um, I guess it's like a powder right that you that you then can put in the water and then the water um, what do you call it what's the word that water does to it the water eats it <coughs> I know there's a word I just it escaped my mind right now um, but then you can saturate the water more with more coffee and then you get a thicker mixture of water and coffee and that mixture will be more saturated so it's easier to get a lot of contrast with coffee than it is with tea excuse you motorcycles <sighs> I don't know why but every time I'm filming there's always someone making a lot of noise outside so I'm sorry if you guys can hear that and if you can't you probably think I'm crazy but I'm not I promise you I'm not crazy <laughs> or maybe maybe I am who knows in the beginning of this piece I spent a really long time trying to get the general values of the big planes right like the walls and the floor and the bookcases the table because I wanted to make sure that they were dark enough before I moved on and went in and defined details I think the main problem I had was that I never got it to be dark enough so everything's just kind of light and washed out I made a color thumbnail of this on my computer after I did the sketch just to have something to go off of and that one's a lot darker and it has a lot more contrast than what I ended up with because I kept just applying the tea to the paper and it, it would be very light and I was trying to build up more color by going over it multiple times but I just never really got it to be as dark as I wanted it to and I think that was also because I was afraid to go over the big areas too much because I didn't want streakiness and it takes a long time to dry and I was afraid of the paper warping and everything I guess I'm just also not used to working with water mediums that much like watercolors and and I guess tea is basically like working with watercolors so maybe I should practice that more so right now it looks very washed out and you really can't tell what I'm doing. Uh, but we agreed that it was okay to add line art to this. And I think that was um, that was a good idea to agree upon that because that really helped me um, separate out the different parts of this illustration. I could have probably also just made it uh, more separate with the T if I really wanted to. But I think the line art was a lot of a faster and easier way to get the feel that I wanted. So I decided to go in with the pencil that I originally transferred the sketch onto the watercolor paper with because that was just what looked the best with the T in my opinion. I did try to do some tests on another piece of paper with some fine liners and brown but they were just a bit too intense for this soft looking piece so I ended up going with the pencil. And I think this is actually a watercolor pencil uh, that I, I I also realized this after I used it to transfer the sketch onto this piece of paper and I started painting. I realized that it was actually a watercolor pencil and that it was gonna smudge everywhere when I put water on it. So I had to go in and erase as much of the pigment as I could. I didn't even think about it when I was doing it because I just grabbed it. It, it was just lying on my desk and I saw a brown pencil and I went oh wow brown pencil I use that oh yeah and there you can see uh, the reason that I no longer use pencil sharpeners because they always break the lead of my pencil and I don't know how that happens I really don't understand because it's not like I drop my pencils and the lead breaks beforehand because when I sharpen them with my knife they're always perfectly fine but every time that I go to use my pencil sharpener it always breaks off and I don't know why if anyone knows why, please let me know in the comments. But back to the drawing. So even though I didn't achieve as much contrast as I wanted in this piece, I think that it really helped when I went in with the line art. Uh, now you can really see what, what goes where and what different parts of this illustration are supposed to be. And I'm really happy that I ended up doing all of this perspective stuff because I really enjoy doing perspective. I just never do it. And it also, it takes a long time, but sometimes it's worth it, in my opinion. Oh, and also, did you notice that my head is uh, in the video for all of this? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a software video if my head wasn't in there all the time, you know? 
Okay, so before we end this video, I just want to remind you to go check out Melanie's video on her channel, Visual Mind, and see what she made out of t this uh, tea challenge. She has a really cool channel, so I also recommend that you go check her out in general, and she does really amazing art. She's really good at watercolors and landscapes and stuff like that. And yeah, she's super cute. You should definitely go check out her channel and her video. I also want to say that I had a lot of fun with this collaboration. So thank you so much for contacting me and asking. And um, yeah, it was, it was great. I loved it. Yay, I had fun. I hope you had fun too, Melanie. But here is my finished piece for this video. So I hope that you like how it turned out. And I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. Be sure to go check out Melanie's video and um, thank you so much for watching. I hope that I will see you later.